let me guess. You've probably been criticized in your worship ministry once or twice, right? Like maybe you didn't do enough hymns on Sunday. Maybe the volume of the mix was too loud. Maybe, I don't know, you're, you wore the wrong shirt on Sunday and people didn't like that you didn't have a suit and tie on. I don't know. Criticism in worship ministry is inevitable. You're going to face it. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips for handling criticism in your worship ministry. Coming up. Hey, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com. This is the place where we talk about how to lead yourself well, lead your church well, and lead worship well. So if you're interested in that, click subscribe down below and let's get into it because today we're talking about criticism in your worship ministry. Let me guess, you've received criticism in your worship ministry before for something probably kind of stupid, right? It's something where you're like, really? Like there, there were some things that went wrong today, but that's the one thing that you pick. Listen, criticism in your worship ministry is inevitable. In a church world, unfortunately, in the world in general, it's not just the church, you're never gonna make everyone happy. You're never going to sing enough hymns. You're never going to, uh, I don't know, wear the right clothes or say the right words or do the right thing that makes everybody perfectly happy. And so inevitably, you're going to receive criticism. And as a leader, we need to be prepared to handle that and think about how we're going to handle that because there's godly ways to respond to criticism and there's ungodly ways to respond to criticism. And if you don't have a plan for how to respond to criticism in a godly way, you're going to do it in an ungodly way. And you're going to be like, well, who are you to tell me what to do? And why are you telling me this? And I don't like you and I'm never going to listen to you again. I know because I've done that before and it's not fun. So how do we respond to criticism in a godly way, in a way that people say, okay, that guy or that girl is a good leader, I can come up to them and talk to them if I have a problem and they aren't going to bite my head off. That's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get to that, I want to have a little fun. I want to hear what is the pettiest thing that you've ever been criticized for in your worship ministry? What is like the smallest thing where you're like, really? You're going to bring that up? Like maybe you wore a hat on stage and somebody didn't like it in your church. Or maybe your right shoe was untied and somebody noticed and said, you look like a slob today. You need to tie your right shoelace. I don't know. It seems like something people would complain about in a church. I don't know. Let us know down below. What is the pettiest thing that you've ever been criticized for in your worship ministry? I'll talk to you in a second. Thanks so much for leaving your answer down below. Let's get into this five-step plan for receiving criticism and handling criticism in a godly way in your worship ministry. The first step is this, to hear. Hear what the person is saying. Don't defend. It's so easy to go on the defensive when somebody brings something up, but the rest of the steps are going to flow from this. So if you want to respond appropriately to criticism in your worship ministry, then you actually need to hear the complaint that is coming. And maybe you're going to hear it and you're going to be like, really? That's the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. And then you stop listening after that. Or maybe you actually listen and you're like, you know what? You kind of have a point. They're, you're not wrong about that. I didn't recognize that before. And of course, if you never listen in the first place, yes, you will shield yourself from all of those stupid complaints that you wish that you didn't have to deal with. But you're also going to miss out on the 5% of complaints that are actually constructive and could actually improve your worship leading. And I think that hearing those complaints or criticism, I, I hope it's constructive criticism. You're going to miss out on the constructive criticism if you just automatically tune out anything that sounds slightly negative. So the first step that we need to do to handle criticism correctly is to hear 
and you can choose how long you hear for. I think sometimes you automatically know, okay, this is something where I just need to smile and nod and say, okay, thank you for your thoughts. Or you might realize that they're actually pointing out something that's legitimate. But you're never going to hear those legitimate things if you instantly la 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 to any complaint that you get. So first, hear. Don't defend. Don't let your first response be defense. Let your first response be hearing the actual complaint. On to step number two, and that is to evaluate. Evaluate now that you've listened and you've actually heard what the person has said. Think, is there any truth in this? Is there any truth in this? And maybe there is no truth in it at all. And you just need to stop listening at that point. And these things happen like in rapid succession, right? You know how somebody comes to, up to you after church and it's not like you have 20 minutes to work through this process in your head. It's like you step off a stage and you see some guy making eyes with you and you're like, oh no, and you walk over and you're like, hey, good morning, how are you? And he just lays into you and you hear it for a second and then you evaluate and say, okay, I'm just not gonna listen to this anymore because there's no truth in it, but... The same thing might happen where you walk off stage and somebody says, hey, I noticed that the slides were a little bit behind this morning. Is there anything that we could do about that? And if you aren't hearing, then you'd just be like, no, they're fine. Like it was perfect, it's fine. But if you actually evaluate and say, okay, is there any truth to that? And you've been looking at the confidence monitor and you're like, you know, the slides were a little bit late today. Like I need to have a conversation with the person running the slides. See how much more fruitful that is for those 5% of conversations that are actually legitimate, constructive criticism. So don't let pride guide. Don't let your pride guide you and just think that you automatically know all the right things and everything is perfect in your worship ministry because it's probably not. So if somebody's taking the time to point something out, evaluate it and think, okay, is there actual truth in this or are they just complaining about something and I can stop listening? Number three, now that you've evaluated, should I keep listening? Actually learn from it. Constructive criticism constructive criticism can be an amazing way to improve our worship leading. Whenever somebody points out something that we didn't see, we didn't even know that it was a problem, and then you use that to improve your worship ministry, that can be an amazing moment of growth. The, the thing is we spend so much time working in our worship ministry, we don't see it from the outside. We don't see what it looks like whenever somebody's sitting out in the chairs of our church looking up on stage and somebody up there on your worship team is like staring at the ground, not smiling at all. Like you don't see that whenever you're up front and you're leading people because that person's in the back of the stage behind you, but the people out in your church see that and that is an example of constructive criticism you can use that truth and say, hey, let's work on our stage presence. If you want to learn about stage presence, you can check this video out right here. That'll teach you a little bit about it. But that's something that you can improve upon. So learn from it. Actually think, okay, is there legitimate truth in this? What can I learn from this? And even in those small complaints, oftentimes there's something to learn from it. It might be something really small, but usually, if you search hard enough, there's some element of truth in there, and maybe it's just been completely distorted by the person who was criticizing you, but usually there's some small form of truth in there. So learn from the criticism. Number four, this one's really important. Have a clearly defined vision for what you're trying to accomplish. Actually know what the purpose of what you're doing is because if you don't know then anytime somebody brings a complaint to you in your church you're just going to be pulled in this direction and then somebody who doesn't agree with that person who is complaining is going to complain in a different direction and you're going to be like oh well this is must be what i need to do and you're going to run over there and then this person's going to complain again and you're going to run over here and then so on and so forth 
Whereas, if you know what you need to do, like you've sat down, you've created a vision for your worship ministry, you are the leader of your worship ministry, it's your job to have a vision for what you're trying to accomplish, then if you are focused on a path and somebody comes and says, why aren't we doing hymns? Or why aren't we doing so many hymns? And you're like, well, we're moving towards a more modern approach of trying to do more contemporary songs. You stay on that path. Or why did we add drums in this Sunday? Well, we're trying to focus on a more modern attempt of doing things to reach the next generation. And you're focused on the path. And you just keep going down that path. And you aren't distracted by the things, the complaints that aren't, um, that aren't contributing to the vision that you and your pastor have set for your church. That's how we stay focused. So have a clearly defined vision for what you're trying to accomplish. That'll keep you focused, and it'll also give you a way to explain why you're doing what you're doing. And you don't need to defend yourself. You just need to explain, this is the vision of where we're headed as a church. This is what we're focused on. And so this is why I did what I did, and this is why I'm going to keep doing it, essentially. And then, yeah, if the person doesn't like that, you can say, okay, go talk to the pastor because this is our vision together. So have a clearly defined, defined vision for what you're trying to accomplish. And finally, number five, know that you're not alone in receiving criticism. Just check out the comments below. If you haven't left the comment below, just leave like that really, really stupid thing that you were criticized for in your worship ministry, just so that other worship leaders in the Leading Worship Well community can know that they aren't alone in somebody complaining that uh, they had a t-shirt on instead of a polo shirt or didn't wear a tie or something. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with stupid uh, complaints, but you know what I'm talking about. Everybody receives complaints. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. In fact, it probably means that you're making progress in implementing change in your church because there's always going to be pushback against change. So if you aren't getting any complaints about anything, that's amazing. But it also might mean that you're not making any progress because people are uncomfortable with change. Just a thought. So just know you're not alone in receiving criticism. It doesn't mean you're doing anything completely wrong. People just complain in church sometimes. Now you have a step-by-step -step process for dealing with criticism. Listen first. Actually hear what the person is saying. Evaluate. Is there any truth from this? Learn from it if there is any truth from it. Have a clearly defined vision for where you're going so you aren't distracted by all the millions of different complaints and just know that you aren't alone in receiving criticism. In your worship ministry, that's how you deal with criticism. In your worship ministry, if you want to improve your worship leading and get criticized less often, I don't know. If you want to improve your worship leading, check out the free audio training that I put together. Link to it down in the description below. It's a free audio training called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. In the audio training, I share with you five tips to instantly improve your worship leading. These are super simple things. You just have to know them. They don't take much effort, but if you make the conscious effort to implement them into your worship leading, you'll level, level up your worship leading. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Until I see you in the next video. Keep leading worship well.